Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming in. This is Building Bixby Conversational Experiences for Hands-Free Use. My name is Alex Ren. I'm a research engineer at Viv Labs Samsung Electronics, uh, focusing on capsule development. Today, we'll be talking about how to develop a capsule for hands-free use. Now, for those of you have, who have been to the code lab, you've already seen this movie agent sample capsule we're using this year. If you haven't yet, I encourage you to drop by the code labs after uh, this session. Um, I'll be talking about the concept of hands-on versus hands-free with regards to Bixby. And then these certain navigation modes we've developed to help users use Bixby hands-free. And I'll wrap up with a summary. So, this is the movie agent capsule. It's a capsule that we're using at SDC, and it showcases a lot of the best practices in Bixby capsule development. By going to the code lab, you'll be able to learn what actions are, what models are, what concepts are, and what dialogue is. That's not what this session is going to be about today. Oh, but first, let's go and uh, take a quick look at what the movie agent capsule can do. Now, movie agent capsule is model like, sort of like a travel agent that helps the user find their destination or you know, a movie that they'll enjoy. And there's many ways to use this capsule. You can provide, uh, you can take this movie quiz to, to, to determine which genre you're in the mood in, or you could just say a certain movie genre. And after that, you get a list of movies and you can tap on them to get more information about them. Now, let me show you how this looks in the IDE. So here I have the example movie agent capsule loaded. This is available in our, at our code lab and also available on GitHub. Now, in this Bixby IDE, we have a simulator here. I click this button. This is a simulator view. We have a view of what the device would show for the user on the screen, and a box here for us to type any NL, or if we wish, we can use this button here or press the space button to use uh, automatic speech recognition. Find me an action movie. Here are a few action movies. So if I just provide a genre, Bixby will find movies of that genre for me. I can scroll around. Tap for some information. Alternatively, if I just say, press reset here to give a new conversation and say, uh, find me a movie. Which genre are you in the mood for? So in this case, since I didn't provide a genre, Bixby provides a prompt of different genres I could choose. If I still don't know, I can ask Bixby for help. Help me choose. Answer these questions and I'll find your perfect movie genre. What type of traveler are you? I can tap to answer. Sounds fun. What snack would you like for the trip? Chocolate. Smooth. Your friend wants to go bungee jumping on the trip. What do you say? Uh, no way. Based on your answers, I found some action movies perfect for you. And this is, the same, this is the same result page as you saw earlier, but we got to it a different way. Bixby is really good about that, and if you want to know how that works, please check out the code lab. Now that demonstration was with the simulator in the Bixby ID. As you can see, it really simulates a hands-on experience for the user has their phone, and they can interact with the screen. Uh, they could also continue the conversation by voice if they wanted to. Um, and as you can see, the visual experience really gives a lot of information, not just the movie title, but a really nice movie poster, another summary information about the movie plot, and et cetera. But what about a hands-free situation? It might not always be possible to look at the, the device. And it might not be safe to look at the device. And the user might not even be able to reach the screen, for example, if uh, 
um, my phone were across the table and I wanted to use Bixby, I couldn't use the Bixby button. There might be even some devices that don't even have a screen. It's important to consider this hands-free use case. In, in fact, over 50% of Bixby invocations are made hands-free. And if you support hands-free, you ensure that your capsule is available to all your users in any situation. And that keeps them coming back to your capsule. I want to show you a quick demo of what we'll be building today. It's a hands-free version of the, is a hands-free experience for the, big, uh, for the movie agent capsule. It's still the same capsule, just in a hands-free mode. Now for the members in the audience who kind of want to imagine how using such a capsule might feel, I encourage you to perhaps close your eyes or look away from the screen and glance at the screen occasionally. So I click the reset button for a new conversation and down here we have this hands-free checkbox. By checking that, we enable hands-free mode. Let me go through that same movie quiz experience uh, that I had earlier. Help me find a movie. Which genre are you in the mood for? Today's highlighted genre is documentary. Help me choose. Answer these questions and I'll find your perfect movie genre. Are you a night owl or an early bird? A, night owl. I'll sleep when I'm dead. B, neither. I'm a sloth. C, early bird. Give me coffee and I'm ready for anything. Early bird. Okay, I'll find something interesting. Will your kids be joining you on this trip? A, yes. B, no kids. Yes. Got it. There's a chance of rain in the forecast. How do you like to spend time indoors? A. Solving puzzles and reading. B. Playing video games. C. Hitting the gym. Last one. Based on your answers, I found some action movies perfect for you. My top recommendation is Terminator, Dark Fate. Would you like to hear a summary for this movie? Okay, as you could see, or as you could hear, there were some differences in this experience. We'll be covering how to create this experience today. You can open your eyes now. Now I want to cover some, I want to cover the terminology I'm using here and what exactly it entails. Hands-on versus hands-free. Here's a quick table of what we'll be going over. By the end of this presentation, you'll know exactly what each of these mean. Remember, hands-on and hands-free. Hands-on mode is as its name implies. The user wakes Bixby using the Bixby button. In the code, there is a variable called dollar hands-free, and this will be false. I'll show you how to use this in a little bit. Now, the microphone behavior for hands-on mode is different from hands-free mode. On a hands-on mode, again, holding the button will wake Bixby, and releasing the button ends the utterance. Bixby will then respond to the user, but then Bixby will keep the microphone off unless the user starts using the Bixby button again. I have this quick video here to show you how that would behave. Here I start off by pressing the Bixby button. Help me find a movie to watch. Which genre are you in the mood for? I notice that Bixby lets me browse and choose. And I tap. Here are a few action movies. And Bixby again lets me browse, scroll, look for a movie that catches my eye. Again, I tap and I can go in and look at the movie details. So this is hands-on mode. For hands-free mode, we have a different sort of set of rules. Here, Bixby is waking, uh, Bixby is waking to use a wake phrase, in this case, hi, Bixby. And the code, the variable dollar hands-free will be true. 
So again, hi Bixby turns on the mic. And in this case, there's no button being held, so the microphone turns off when Bixby detects the user is done speaking. Then as before, Bixby provides a response, and if necessary, the microphone turns on automatically so that the user can provide their response. There's no need to say, hi Bixby, hi Bixby, hi Bixby, over and over again in a hands-free experience. Let me show you a quick demo of what that looks like. So here, I wake Bixby with, hi Bixby. Help me find a movie to watch. Which genre are you in the mood for? Today's highlight of genre is fantasy. Action. Here are a few action movies. My top recommendation is Spider-Man, Far From Home. Would you like to hear a summary for this movie? Yes. Peter Parker and his friends go on a summer trip to Europe. However, they will hardly be able to... So as you can see, or here, the microphone is turning on and off at the right moments for the hands-free experience. This is currently not behavior that you can observe in the simulator and we encourage you to load this, load a private revision, um, to load the Bixby capsule onto your own device for testing. Now, I wanna show you how we achieved all that in the hands, uh, in the movie agent example capsule. Now, these are the key considerations when we build out a hands-free experience. So the users, we don't assume that they can look at or touch the device. We also assume that they will only interact with voice and they'll be listening to the Bixby dialogue as well. Thus, as developers, we need to expand Bixby's spoken dialogue to cover what would originally have been shown as a visual element. And of course, on the flip side, minimize reliance on visuals. The screen will still be on in a hands-free situation we don't recommend you put much information on it. Now I built all of that with a key, with a feature activated by a key called navigation mode. And there's a few different navigation modes like read one, read many, even reading none. We'll be covering a few of these in the next few slides. So first the developer needs to choose this navigation mode and then they provide the dialogue needed for key moments, and by doing this, they get built-in navigation, built-in hands-free navigation support, including some navigation commands. Let's take a look at each of the screens we saw in Movie Agent and determine which navigation mode fits best for each experience. Now, if you recall, we had this list of movies at the end of our flow. The question is, what's the best way to communicate this list to the user? You could imagine various ways to try approaching this. You could read all the titles. That might take some time, and the user would probably forget about, their, about which movies are read out loud. You might want to read a few at a time, but even then, movie titles can be long. And oftentimes, hearing a movie title is what sparks a, a moviegoer's interest. And so, in this case, We've implemented these results as a read one uh, navigation mode. Bixby will read one movie title at a time and then ask the user if they are interested. Now here are a few keys to keep in mind. We have the list summary. Here are a few action movies. A summary, which is the item that is being shown on screen. My top recommendation is Spider-Man Far From Home. And an item selection question. Would you like to hear a summary for this movie? Let me show you that in the IDE again. I'm hitting the reset button. Find me some action movies. Here are a few action movies. My top recommendation is Terminator, Dark Fate. Would you like to hear a summary for this movie? So this was, all, this was achieved through the navigation mode. 
but how would you really go about figuring that out if this is the first time you're encountering this capsule? So we can click this debug icon here to open the debugger. We see here that we are on a list of movies. If we click this dialogue tab here, we can see that dialogue that we just heard. If we click on this and expand, with this debugger, you can always see where dialogue comes from. And if we click on this right here, this blue link, this opens up the file that was responsible for that output. Now here's that navigation mode key that I mentioned. And we are activating it, activating a read one mode if dollar hands free is true. And you can see in here, we have that list summary. Here's some action movies I found. And then the page, what we call the page content, which is how we handle the selection question in this case. Uh, which movie, uh, are you interested in this movie, hearing more about this movie? I can show you how this macro works as well. This is a template macro. And this macro just refers to a macro we defined uh, in another file. You can see we have a lot of macros here, so let's take, we'll copy this and search for it with Command F. Yes. We could also have found this out through the debugger. If you're wondering where, would you like to hear a summary about this movie comes from? Clicking this would take me back to that file. Now, uh, another thing that we have changed in this hands-free situation is since we're doing read one, we want to show only one movie poster at a time, and we also have the luxury of making it a little bigger. Good for glassability in case the user is able to take a quick look at the screen. Now again, we can use the dollar hands-free variable where we control the layout to make this happen. And again, make sure to define this spoken summary. Make sure that what's being shown on screen will be read out loud. And jumping back to the IDE. As you can see here is a spoken summary. This will only be read in the hands-free mode. Now you notice that I was able to say yes to hear more information about a movie if I was interested in it. Now, this yes or no or next, these navigation commands and selection commands, they come as part of the read one experience and you don't actually need to add any more code for it. In fact, that is the case for all of this hands-free navigation experience that we just made. They are all changes that are outside of your core logic. We handle the pagination, we handle the item selection. We handle, we handle everything for you if you use navigation mode to support hands-free. Now, as I was saying, what if the user is using your net, these navigation commands and they end up somehow falling off the page, such as backwards on the first item or forwards, if they, if they try to navigate forwards off the last item. This activates what we call underflow or overflow, and you could define a dialogue for these cases, such as this is the last movie, or that, that was the first movie, to keep your, keep your users situated in the experience. This is all done automatically as long as you provide these dialogues. Now I want to cover another navigation mode called read many. So if you recall, we had this quiz. Uh, the, the movie agent will ask a few short quiz questions and they're sort of just for fun. 
to help the user, uh, to help us choose the best movie for the user. Now, the question is how, what's the best way to read out these possible answers? We could try to use the read one read method like we, that we just saw before. There can be many questions, and sometimes you need to hear them all to really get a feeling for what's the best answer in this situation. So I recommend that we use a read many navigation mode here. It allows Bixby to read out a defined list of answers, or list of, list of items, excuse me. And of course, will allow the user to pick the best answer. We have the same keys again here. In this case, the list summary is um, prepping the user to answer the question and contains the question. And the spoken summary, as we define it, will be each choice. Bixby will automatically read all the choices on the page. In a read many list situation, we also get built in ordinal selection, so if I have the quiz like this here, for example, with four items, we automatically support selection if the user says first one, second one, uh, or last one, like you saw me try earlier. The important point to remember, though, that this kind of selection is not aware of what the contents are of, for each item. And if you wanted to support the user's answering with things such as well done or note me, please, in this specific quiz, you'll need to model that with a filtering action. This is already implemented in the capsule. I invite you to take a look at it. And in fact, we recommend that you do this filtering action even in a non-hands-free situation, even in a hands-on situation. As Bixby is a conversational assistant and we encourage users to use NL as much as they want. Jumping to the IDE for a moment. Hitting reset. Play the movie quiz. Which genre are you in the mood for? Today's highlighted genre is documentary. Help me choose. Answer these questions and I'll find your perfect movie genre. Your friend wants to go bungee jumping on the trip. What do you say? A, yes. When? B, maybe. C, no way. As before, we can use the debug panel here. Jump into the dialog. By clicking on this blue link, we can see where this dialog came from. Again, we activate this navigation mode if we're in hands-free mode. Here's our list summary. Here's our page content with those underflow and overflow dialogues, as I mentioned before. You might see that this time there's a little bit more complicated logic in this item selection question. In the movie, in the movie result view, it was simply like, are you interested in this movie? In this case, we have some special branching logic we want, to pers we want to customize reading out each page of questions depending on how many items there are or how many pages there are. For example, in this case, if there aren't any pages, that is, if everything fits on one, if there's only one page, if everything fits on one page, we don't need to really mention, we, we don't want any special dialogue. Um, the number of items on each page is governed by this key here, page size. Now, this was absent in read one since read one just reads one thing. But this page size can be as small or as large as you want. In fact, it, can't, it could be the whole list if you wanted it to be. I'll come back to this in a moment. As I showed you, there is this page size parameter. And Bixby will automatically handle pagination for you um, if you define it a page size, and the list that it's showing happens to split over many pages. Ordinal selection, first one, second one, et cetera, will still work in this situation. 
and it, we, we've designed it so that ordinal selection will work on the page currently being read to the user. It's probably unlikely that the user could remember what's the first item that was, for example, many pages away. I wanna do a quick demo here to show you what it looks like if we have a quiz um, where there's many, many answers. Help me find a movie to watch. Which genre are you in the mood for? Today's highlighted genre is documentary. Help me choose. Answer these questions and I'll find your perfect movie genre. What snack would you like for the trip? A. Popcorn. B. Chocolate. C. Fresh fruits and veggies. D. Chips. E. Trail mix or say more to hear more options. More. F, cookies. G, pie. H, seaweed. I, cheesecake. J, beef jerky. Or say more to hear more options. More. The last options are K, pretzels. L, no snack. That's all the options I have. Which will you choose? So as you could hear from that, the dialogue is, has tr slightly changed now since we have many pages. We suggest the user that there are more pages or we let the user know that you know, they're on the last page and they won't get any more options. So all of that is dictated through our use of uh, these different branches of code. This is all available in the example movie Agent Capsule. We have checked into GitHub. I encourage you to take a closer look and see what you can come up with with, the, with all these uh, hands-free navigation modes. Now, while this navigation mode support is really great, there are actually some situations where we might not need to do, not need to use it at all. For example, on the page, on this, on this input view, where we're asking if the user has a certain genre they're interested in, it's certainly possible to use, for example, read many to read off a list of different genres, or even read one to read the genres off one by one. Are you interested in animation? Are you interested in comedy? Are you interested in crime? Okay. It seems that this is unnecessary. We kind of know this for, uh, intuitively. The reason is that movie genres is a kind of a known quantity to people who like to watch movies. So in this case, we can leave the experience the same as hands-on mode and do what we call read none. The user will bring their answer. And there's no need for us to tell the user what possible answers there are because it's already familiar to the user. All right, so we covered a lot today. So I wanna wrap up with the key points. Use navigation mode to make your capsule support a hands-free experience. Pagination, item selection, it all comes as part of the system. And by doing this, you ensure that the microphone will turn on after dialogue to drive the conversation. Note that I didn't write any JavaScript code today. None of it's pre-written. All I needed to do to support hands-free mode is to use those navigation modes I showed you today. Everything else comes as part of the navigation mode system. Now this table should make more sense now. In our hands-on mode, we're welcomed by the Bixby button. The dollar hands-free will be false. The microphone will not turn on for a user response. And the spoken summary is not read. In a hands-free mode, Bixby is started with hands-free. 
the microphone will turn off when the user is done speaking. The hands-free variable will be true. And once the dialogue is finished being read by Bixby, the mic will turn on for the user response. And of course, the spoken summary will be read out to the user. Thank you so much for coming today. I hope that gave you a good overview of what hands-on and what hands-free are in, 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 in terms of Bixby. Now, if you have any questions, I welcome you to come with me to the Bixby Code Lab. I'd be happy to show you how hands-free works. Thank you all very much. Let's take questions. I'll take your question. Yes, those are built in. Thank you. I'll please join me and my, my colleagues at uh, the next session, next two sessions for the rest of the day. And please participate in Big Speed Dam Jam, Def Jam, and you might earn a lot of prizes. Thanks again.